gluconeogenesis that are primed for regulation. And the first ones that we're going to talk about are hexokinase and phosphofructose kinase. And um, we're not going to really talk about this isomerase, but these two particular ones, as we know, they are appropriate targets for glycolysis because they're at the irreversible steps. So uh, hexokinase is going to increase the hexokinase activity, and that's going to allow the activation of glucose. So whenever we increase our enzyme, that's on this axis, we are looking at the glycolysis, that's on this axis, and when we increase the amount of hexokinase, we see lots of glycolysis, right? Um, and then what we are seeing here with the phosphofructose kinase 1 is that when we increase our phosphofructose kinase 1 activity, it's going to enable us the catabolism of activated glucose via the glycolysis. And so for this particular figure here, uh, this is looking at it, I believe, in the liver extract, extract of rats. The next slide that we're going to talk about is the control of glycogen synthesis. And so this is really talking about the insulin signaling pathway. And so what we're looking at is how are we going to increase the amount of glucose that's imported into our muscle. So again, a myocyte is a muscle cell. We have our capillary here, which is our blood cell. And how are we going to get the glucose from the blood into our muscle? And of course, one of the things that we were going to want to do is one to, uh, for this process, if we get glucose inside, then hexokinase can activate, can act on it. We can form that glucose 6-phosphate and glucose 1-phosphate, and then eventually what we can do is we can go into glycogen synthase. But the key is, is that we have to be able to get the glucose in. So it's going to use this transporter, this receptor protein here called GLUT4. This is the plasma membrane. And one of the important things is that we have to control this. It's not just going to happen all of the time. And so what could be a regulator of it? Well, if we look down here, it's insulin. So insulin, which is an extracellular signal, so it doesn't enter, is going to bind to its receptors, which is then going to undergo um, a change that is then going to signal. And as you can see here, it's going to activate really three different things. It's going to activate our GLUT4 receptor, so glucose can come into the cell. It's going to activate our hexokinase, yay, so then glucose can be um, transformed. And then it's going to activate our glycogen, glycogen synthase, and then again, we can make glycogen. So glycogen synthase, this is just an enzyme that makes glycogen for energy storage. And it's going to be inhibited, allosterically inhibited, when we have um, high levels of ATP, um, and ADP and inorganic phosphate, and it's going to be allosterically activated by glucose 6 phosphate. So, this is the pathway that it's going to be activated. So, insulin really affects three of these steps um, of this pathway. So, it has an effect on the transport of glucose, it has an effect on the hexokinase activity, um, and so really this could play an important role in glycogen synthesis. Hexokinase 4, or that glucokinase, so hexokinase 4 is also known as glucokinase, just so you know. Uh, it can also be regulated, but in this particular case, it's actually going to be regulated by sequestering it. So what is meant by that? Well, the cool thing here is that we can take this hexokinase and we can remove it, and we can place it inside the nucleus. And if we place it inside the nucleus, are we going to have it available in order for it to work on this pathway? No, right? So this is a different way that we can actually regulate our enzymatic activity. So again, everything we're talking about is regulation. So we have the glucose, it's going to enter through the GLUT2, it's going to go through this pathway. Um, if it's available, we can make it into fructose 6-phosphate. And so we're going to have it available for our glycolysis. However, hexokinase uh, 4, or this glucokinase, can actually be removed. And so what's going to um, facilitate the removal of this? Well, if we have high levels of glucose or if we have high levels of the fructose 6-phosphate, we're going to remove this using that regulator protein. So I do want to mention, so I kind of talked about hexokinase 1, hexokinase 4, um, also known as glucokinase, and these are known as isozymes. So isozymes, so the terms over here, isozymes, what they're really doing is they are different enzymes that are going to catalyze the same reactions, 
So they're going to typically share similar sequences, but their regulation is often, often very different. So they are different enzymes, but they catalyze, can catalyze the same reaction. And so what this is looking at is this is looking at the comparison of the kinetic properties of hexokinase 4, also known as the glucokinase, and hexokinase 1. So hexokinase 4 kind of lo looks like a sigmoidal curve, that S-shaped curve, um, and it has a much lower Km uh, compared to hexokinase 1. So really, when our blood glucose level rises above 5 millimolar, hexokinase 4 activity is going to increase. But hexokinase 1 is already operating, right? So at 5 millimolar, this thing's already operating at its near Vmax, so it can't really respond to an increase in glucose concentration. So this is kind of our first responder, and this is going to be a secondary responder. So this slide should look very, very familiar. So this is looking at our kind of competing pathways of glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. So glycolysis is in pink, gluconeogenesis in blue. This is a great slide for you guys to review and look over. And remember, there's going to be the steps that we have to um, overcome or bypass from glycolysis. And so we have this first step here, which is the conversion into that oxaloacetate. So that's one of the steps that we have to overcome. We have another step up here, which is going to utilize fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase. And then we have this one up here that's going to be the glucose 6-phosphatase. So looking, I'm going to slide back here again. These would be great places, right, that we could then regulate. So if we're looking at fructose 6-phosphate, this would be a good reaction that we could then regulate. And that's exactly what happens in our cell. Um, so this slide is just showing the regulation of our fructose 6-phosphate, and it's doing that through the activity of PFK1, and this is the phosphofructose kinase 1. So again, phosphofructose kinase 1, it's an enzyme, it helps control that flux of metabolites through the glycosidic pathway. We have the conversion of fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, and that's a commitment step in glycolysis, so this is all remember, uh, reminder, sorry. ATP is going to be a negative effector on this. Um, and that should make sense because at high ATP, why are we going to spend energy on this? We're not because we don't need glycolysis. So it's only at low ATP, right, that we're going to see an increase in this fructose 6-phosphate. And so this enzyme, the PFK1, is really activated by AMP, right, so that low level of AMP. And it's also going to be activated by another molecule called fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, um, and then it's going to be inhibited by citrate. And again, citrate is kind of the product of the citric acid cycle. So if we have lots of energy and it's backed up, why do we need to create more? So really what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about um, what happens with these regulators. So if there's high AMP, we're going to do glycolysis, right, because that means that there's low ATP. Um, and we're going to do go gluconeogenesis if AMP is low and there's high ATP. So one of the key regulation steps is, uh, as I previously mentioned, that fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So as you can see, there's a lot of regulators that are going to play an important role of this. So there are a number of different regulators. One of the ones, it's not on this slide, it's going to be on the very next one, is uh, the fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. But let's look at this particular one here. So as we can see, fructose 6-phosphate, so for it to go to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, right? If there's high ATP, it's not going to go through that phosphokinase activity. But if there's high ADP, this is going to activate it. If there's high AMP, it's going to activate it. Oh, if there's citrate, it's going to stop it. So everything I talked about on the previous slide applies here um, as we go through these two. So it's just regulating whether it's going gluconeogenesis or glycolysis. So I mentioned previously that there was another regular other than ATP, ADP, AMP, and citrate. There's another regulator that's important for this, and this is that fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. So fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is going to also regulate our fructose 6-phosphate um, activity and our PFK1 
activity. And so this is going to regulate, it's an allosteric regulator of this cycle. It's going to activate our phosphofructose kinase, which is a glycosidic enzyme. And it's going to inhibit our fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, which is a gluconeogenic enzyme. So really I'm saying if we have, if we want to go to glycolysis, if fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is high, we're going to go gluconeogenesis if two, fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is low.